Howdy, howdy, howdy. My name's Anachi Sasuke. Welcome back to Let's Read Homestuck. In the last episode, John arrived and is going to be talking to these people, I suppose. Well, he's first, John's going to talk to these people, and they're going to talk, and then 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 they're going the day from the bad timeline told me funny some funny stories when we got together on the grassy hill planet, but we weren't actually hanging out for that long, so I didn't hear much. Also, I'm mostly sure Vriska wasn't alive during their trip. Oh well, let me tell you, Vriska was most certainly alive during this one. Like, almost extra alive, if that's possible. <laughs> I think I know what you mean. I spent some time with her when she was a ghost, and uh... Let's just say, whatever her morality status is, she makes her presence hard to ignore. Yes! YES! I LOVE THIS! Can we spend our whole reminiscence just destroying Vriska slightly above audible level? Slightly? Carcat, you only have one volume setting. WOW! Fuck you! Okay, dude, maybe let's not spend our pal, our pal time trash-talking circuit, if only because there's no way you're not getting repeatedly trounced exactly just like that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay, I'll chill out. You're right, Dave, as usual. Wow. Carcat, for a funny shouty guy, you you backed out on that really fast. I'm almost a bit disappointed. I was looking forward to more of your patented ravings. Hey, John Fuckbert, I'll have you know I'm a, a little more mature and reasonable than the last time you saw me. I'm a lot more than Mr. Holler Sponge OneNote, and anyone who disputes this can cordially invite me to play their dirty seed flap like a discount harmonica. Oh, well, I'm sold. Seriously, though, it's pretty cool to finally meet you. I mean, under more civil, rational circumstances, unlike whatever the fuck that b brief encounter was three years ago where you KO'd Friska and it poofed your flimsy ass in the, the fuck-all continuum. I know I seemed really mad about that at the time, for whatever reason, but now I've had so many boring hours on that meteor to spend barely reflecting on that roughly 10,000 ways I don't give the slightest fuck about whatever idiotic twist of fate transpired back there. <laughs> okay. I'm completely over it. I'm over a lot of things, actually. You are? Yeah. Ow. Hit my hand. Hit my hand. Like, remember back when I was yelling at you all the time from my computer? Back then, I probably would have felt nervous or awkward about this encounter because of, well, you know, no. I was hitting on you briefly and in a very confusing, non-chronological way without even quite realizing how badly I was shoving my strut pod down my own statement tunnel. Dude. I mean, and so you mercifully and with a, a fair amount of attack shut me down, don't you remember? Um, maybe? How can you not remember that? I don't know, it was a long time ago and we had a lot of ridiculous conversations. Okay, well, maybe it was a bigger deal for me than it was for you. I mean, obviously it was, that's sort of the whole point, but the real point is, or that I was trying to make, is that it isn't a big deal anymore because I'm over it. Carcat, what the fuck are you doing? What? I'm talking, quite casually, about some shit that's not a big deal, and the point is that it's not a big deal anymore, so I'm just casually saying that. God. Okay, it's not an unreasonable conversation to have, but like, we just started friend jamming about past anecdotes to get us all at the speed or whatever, and you're already trucking out these guns? Guns? What guns? Just saying, it doesn't sound that casual and no big deal if you keep saying it's casual and no big deal. Oh, also, it's the fucking, it's the first fucking thing out of your mouth of John in three years. Sorry! I'm so truly fucking sorry! I forgot there was such an outstandingly smooth pile of shit and a cape within my judgment radius. No, I mean, I think I remember, I think you were, um, black flirting with me or something? Put in backwards order and while constantly yelling? I didn't really even know what that was, and then I told you I wasn't a homosexual, so it was kind of a moot point, but also, you didn't even know what that was either? Yes! That's basically what happened, and that is exactly what I was trying to say I was over, and it wasn't a big deal anymore, but now it's a big deal again, I guess? That's fucking great! Thanks, Dave! Yo, I'm hardly one to talk here, since I'm a goddamn geyser of hilariously self overizing Freudian bloopers. At this point, I can't even pretend to keep a lid on any shit I've got in me, because I know sooner or later, during one of my rad soliloquies, I'll just pratfall butt backwards into an embarrassing admission, and I just have to be like, yeah, yeah, okay, that's my shit, that's what I'm, that's what I'm about, let's just get the fuck on with our lives. So when John's like, hey man, and you're all locked and loaded with some stuff about how you're over him, and go on and on about it like it's some ob in some way obvious protest too much shit, and everybody knows it, so I don't see how it salvages any of your dignity or whatever to pretend that's not what's happening. Oh my fucking god! 
So what I'm saying is, if you're so eager to push this out there, I'm not pushing this out there! If you're pushing this out there, which you are, then maybe we should rap about it. I mean, discuss it critically and earnestly, not drop ill rhymes or anything, though that would be, it could be sweet too. <laughs> So are you sure you still don't have these unreconciled black rom feelings about John? I say we air this out before it ferments into some rank and hella unexamined feeling sauce. Dave, I think you're making Karakat uncomfortable. Are you being a wise guy and trying to make us uncomfortable? No! I don't do that, bros. That's that's huge uncool. I don't see what has to be so uncomfortable about chatting about our true, true ass thoughts and emotions. <laughs> Dude, you clearly had a spades thing for John, but I don't recall you ever bringing it up. Is this something you've been thinking about all this time, or- No! Not- Not really! Yeah, we could've talked about this. I have all kinds of shit to say about John, seeing as he was my number one dude for approximately the majority of 13 years. The main dead end here is, man, man, is like, nothing personal at all. It's just that he's literally incapable of hating anyone. I know that! That is the exact fucking thing I knew and understood, and why I felt so stupid about it in hindsight! Well... Not that I really want to egg on this train of thought, but I don't know if that's quite true. It's not! I can get really angry and hate stuff too, just like you. But I think only in extreme cases? The Skull Guy and Suspenders I got really pissed off at. But I'm 100% sure that hate was platonic. Getting pissed off at a Suspender dude sounds like just the sort of yarn I want to be all ears for sometime. But, okay, that's something to work with. Hey, Carcat, maybe there's some hope yet. Maybe it's not a total lost cause. <laughs> Okay, Dave, it definitely sounds like you're trying to own us now. Own? What? No way! I mean, real as a motherfucker. Being able to hate things I think is the smaller part of the equation? What about the other part? Don't you think that's, uh, a little more significant? What part? The part about not being a homosexual! John, dude, I gotta say, when you talk about being or not being a homosexual, you sound kind of like a corny old man. What? Why? No, that's a normal way of putting it. I mean, it's pretty a pretty normal thing to say, right? When that's how you are? Somebody fucking kill me! What does normal even mean, though? Normal was some crap that ruled our dead civilization. We left that behind years ago. It's all a huge pile of shit that doesn't matter anymore. Oh. Okay? So then, you're saying... What are you saying? I'm not sure, I guess. Okay, I guess what I'm saying is... I don't think it's all as simple as you think it is, or maybe not, like, actively think it is, but continue to assume it is on the account of not thinking about it much. Due to a lot of junk about the subject that gets shoved into our brains from movies and stuff while we were just dumb kids, I... Hmm. I'm just saying, it probably isn't as absolute or simplistic as the way you've been framing it, or maybe it is for you personally, I don't know. I'm just guessing you haven't spent much time thinking about it, if only because all the stuff we read and watch... Suggests that, like, even examining your honest thoughts about it is perilous road to, uh, to go down. Because if you actually think too much about it without always having that undercurrent of, haha, nope, 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 then what happens? What if it turns out you're like, like, like not exactly the way you thought you were? Or maybe not so much that as old presumptions about what you were turn out to not be that relevant? Why? Why are these words happening to our conversation? I don't know, man. Not sure what you've been doing the last three years, all riding a large boat and saving everyone from apocalyptic whatever, but I've had a fuck ton of time on my hands to think about stuff, about stuff I've said and done in the past. Why? Why I said and did them? A lot of things I once would have insisted were like part of my brand and helped me come across as cool and smartassy, but now I'm not so sure. We used to rip on each other all the time for being gay even though we knew we weren't, which of course is what made it funny, remember? Yeah, I don't know, it was pretty funny sometimes. It was just a lot of joking around. Yeah, I know. It frankly is funny to say how gay something is sometimes, and let's face it, sometimes someone or something is just flat out really fucking gay, and there's no two ways about it. It's more like it's more like that through the preponderance of all that jokey shit is an underlying implication that it's all lame stuff for pansies, but not like us. No, we're not lame, and haha, ha, that's the joke. Which thrives on this, like, double-buried implication that the real cool shit is found on this absurd, wanky ideal about masculinity, which, if you think about it, is one, dumb as fuck, two, male adulation of masculinity to the extent, that extent, to be honest, is pretty fucking gay into itself, and three, was always some totally impossible shit for us to live up to anyway. I think all that's mixed up with the same phony ideals about heroism, like, living up to the storybook idea of what a hero, to me, feels almost interchangeable with living up to society's snapshot of what a hard, manly dude should be. 
I stopped pretending I could ever live up to either thing a while ago, and mainly have spent time looking back on the sheer magnitude of all my joking around. I used to lambast fuckers left and right, grinding them into the pavement over how gay they probably were, or how much they were probably quite possibly jonesing to kiss some dudes or such. And I don't really feel bad about it in the sense that it was jerky or, like, insensitive necessarily, even though I guess it maybe was. More than I feel like it was probably transparent, a massive front of outrageous snark to disguise a lot of insecurity like a fucking cover-up. As long as I kept clowning hard about it, I didn't actually have to think about it or face my actual beliefs. Dave, um, oh, that's cool and all, and I think I mostly agree, but, um, how do I put this? Are you... are you gay now? What? No. The words! Why won't the words stop, dear God? I know, it sounds to me like you're trying to tell me something here. Man, look, no, look. I mean, it's okay if you're gay now. That's totally cool, It's if true. I just think you turning gay would be kind of a weird consequence of me changing the timeline around. Okay, not weird, just unexpected. I don't know what I did that would account for that. Maybe saving one of Terezi's plush toys did some goofy homosexual butterfly effect thing on you? Jeez, who knows? Dude, you aren't listening! Although a gay butterfly effect is a pretty funny idea, let's not dismiss that as a concept altogether. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is sort of getting lost in the weeds here. The fact that you were wondering if I turned gay makes me think maybe you're still not quite on the wavelength I'm trying to ramble on here. Maybe we should res wrestle this topic to the ground another time. There's a lot more I'd, I'd want to say, but this is probably not the venue. I mean, not literally wrestle to the ground, because that is maybe literally the gayest course of action we could possibly take, but you know what I mean. Yes! Later! Talk later, because then the words would stop, or wouldn't that be lovely? That's fine, we can talk about anything you want anytime. I'm just still confused about what you're getting at, is all. Like, what is the bottom line here? Are, are you actually attracted to boys now? Do you, um... Did you, like, date any boys? Uh, but there weren't even that many boys on the meteor. Well, there's that clown guy, but I don't really see you and him. That only leaves, um, were you and Carcat? Are you and Carcat? Like, hmm. Let me get ready. No, 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 no. I retreat to my safe place, and yet the words, the stupid fucking prattle jockeying like Rowdy Barn Beast up against the partitions of good fucking sense and the most basic personal boundaries, the goddamn blither of tactless nincompoops, how it continues to haunt my wretched ears, the words spill over the side of this enchanted metal frog discus. Like a babbling spring in mythical, a mythical forest governed by a guild of gossip hungry lobotomy hobbits. This deluge of words leaked from the incontinent crevices of two brainless gushing y yammer twats. It overfloweth, oh how it overfloweth, sogging my gray practical pair of pants. The leggings of a simple man, a humble man. It then continues its downward trickle, dousing my unremarkable shirt, the serviceable garment of your average Alternian Joe. Chilling the frail torso beneath, a pathetic duffel of meat wrapped with heavy sobs. Sobs caused by words, words which continue to drip and sluice and spill, threatening to drown me, pledging the promising. And yet I will not drown. Why won't I drown? Please let me drown! Let me drown so the words will be no more! Dave, I'm pretty sure we're making Carcat uncomfortable now. Yeah, maybe we should drop this. Okay, I don't know if you ever picked this up from him, but he's, he's a pretty sensitive guy. What? No. It's true. It's pretty much the easiest dude to rip on and makes for an irresistible target, but you also have to know where to draw the line. Really don't, don't want to actually, you know, like, upset him. Yeah, me neither. Um, what the fuck is he doing? Man, I don't know, that's just his regular shit. Like, an everyday occurrence, but with different bodily positions and geographic configurations. I see. Bro, will you get the fuck up here? No! Okay, suit yourself. Um, anyway, as you can see, I've been prob I've been spending probably way too much time with trolls. <laughs> it messes with you, gets you thinking about stuff, you know? I can imagine. I think life was a lot more boring on the ship, but we talked about you you all a lot. We would always wonder how you and Rose were managing to get along with all these crazy trolls. I think we mostly pictured a lot of arguments. That's not too far off. I'm still getting used to having such insane, limitless powers that let me go anywhere I want. It's tempting to go to time periods like yours and find out what I missed, but I don't want to mess with too much anymore, since it seems like I got the timeline to a nice, stable place as it is. 
So I guess I just have to do what any regular guy does and imagine fondly what it would be like if I got to travel with you guys. I wonder if I would have gotten, like, absorbed in troll culture too, or troll ways of thinking. It's really inevitable. You pick up the lingo, they pick up yours. It's like a co stupid cultural melange after a while that barely makes any sense from either frame of reference. I wonder if I would have learned to understand black romance. It's such a goofy idea, but it seems pretty important to trolls. They take all their quadrants pretty seriously, to be honest. Yeah, years ago when we first met the trolls, I remember being pretty fascinated by all our cultural differences when Carcat and Frisco were telling me about them. I remember really sincerely trying to understand it all from their point of view. It's hard, though. I still think about the idea of black romance sometimes, and I try to remember, imagine how that really works or feels. I don't know. Do you understand it? Yeah, I spent enough time talking about it where I think I get it, but... I've never had any had calls or any real inclination to put it into practice or anything. Mainly the idea of hating somebody and translating that into attraction or some kind of romancy feeling feels so alien to me, and you're right. I have a really hard time even hating anyone in the first place. Word. I mean, I get annoyed by people, sure. Like who, me? No, not really. Well, sometimes, but not much. I always tend to exaggerate my grievances with you for the sake of laughs. <laughs> A better example is more recently when I was doing my re retcon mission, I was getting really annoyed with Drezzy and her mind games. Yep. Definitely never cross a line to hate, though, because we were working together to try to fix a dire situation, and even though she's weird and insane, she's otherwise a pretty good friend, but... All our needling and japes at totally inappropriate times when there was so much on the line, ah, it was so frustrating! Egbert, I have news for you! Well, he's back! All right side up and everything! <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I, I'm, ha I'm having fun, I apologize. I heard you were talking about quadrants, so I decided to pause my tantrum. John, all you're doing here is describing the subtle feelings which plant the seed for having a caligonous crush on someone. What? You heard me? You are naively admitting to struggling with some black feelings for Terezi. So, there you go! Question answered! Turns out you are perfectly capable of black romance. <laughs> no! A fair rebuttal, however, consider this counterpoint. Yeah, yes, but I don't hate her, and I'm sure I never will. I'm just saying I find her, like, somewhat annoying and really aggravating a lot of the time, but that's it. But that's exactly what the feeling is. It doesn't start out as full-blown antipathy, and it rarely even reaches such an extreme level of hostility even over long-term black relationships. There are peaks to it, but otherwise a general ebb and flow to the dark feelings, just like with flushed relationships. Okay, but... I don't know if I'm expressing myself clearly. I felt aggravated by her a lot, but that doesn't fully describe, like, there were those negative feelings, but also, but, yes, that's it, right there. The butt is always part of it. What you're trying to say, you had frustrated, negative emotion toward her, but they don't comprehensively account for your attitude towards her. Meaning, there are some things about her you actually like, but the negative feelings make it hard for you to put them, your finger on them, or even want to acknowledge them. That is absolutely standard. What good would it be having a kismesis who didn't possess qualities you actually admired on some level? That would be boring, and it wouldn't even work. There'd be no tension, no push and pull on the turbulent emotional landscape. The subtle positives add fuel to the negative feelings, often giving them a reason to exist at all. They inflame the aggravating factors, reminding you deep down how much you would like and admire this person if it wasn't for all their infuriating flaws and the incredible sense of frustration that causes that causes, along with all the associated hot-headed feelings. That's the essence of black romance. And the positive qualities you see deep down in a kiss message also serve as the basis for red feelings towards that person, assuming the relationship ever starts to vac vacillate. It's all pretty straightforward, really. No! This is messed up! I don't know, John, it all sounds pretty logical to me. Carcat knows his shit when it comes to quadrants. Uh, uh, it can't be true, though. It feels so fucked up. What if you're right, though? Uh, no, 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 no. That's part of it, too! The no, no, no! It's all part of the feeling, that's how it always goes! This sense of self-incrimination when it's dawning on you that you have these conflicts, this conflicting feelings towards someone who bugs you so much. Oh my god, this whole reaction is so fucking textbook! It's hilarious, really! It's fucked up, though! It's supposed to feel fucked up! Aw, oh, man! I just wanted to have a nice catch-up chat, not get so transparently owned at the trollmances. It happens to the best of us sooner or later. This crap is kind of old hat to me by now, but I get why you're kind of f uh, freckling at the implications here. 
you didn't have years of living with trolls to kind of normalize this stuff. I don't think I want to want it to feel normalized, though. I'm not ready to, like, admit that. I have some warped spade crush on her based on some feeling I don't understand, and it makes no sense to me. Oh, God, what if it's true? I have to try as hard as I can to suppress this feeling and make sure I never think about it again. Okay, sounds like a weenie thing to do, but sure, have fun with that. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, probably. Just please don't tell her about any of this, okay, guys? John, you don't have to remind us about one of the most fundamental statues of the bro code, which is practically fucking scripture on my planet dating back hundreds of millennia. Dave and I fucking sleep and breathe the bro code in all its clauses, no matter how fine the print. Feel free to come and talk to us about any this anytime. Your secrets will always be safe. Dude, that sentiment is well and good, but when you're pledging a vow of secrecy, maybe you should try to keep it down a little. Damn! Yeah, sorry. This is really confusing, though. Assuming you're right, and I'm busted on having these feelings, and I'm not even saying you aren't, but I thought humans weren't supposed to be able to feel stuff like that. Like what exactly? Like, perceive and feel romantic stuff in the same way trolls do, because we're aliens to each other. Well, okay, humans can feel the gay stuff pretty often, I guess. I didn't think we could feel the spade stuff, though. I don't know. I just thought it was some screwy biological difference. Nah, I disagree. Both humans and trolls are emotionally versatile sentient beings that can feel many hells of different things. You're probably right, you would know better than me at least. That's always a smart fallback position by the way, especially on rap. I could screw you on rap too, are you confused about rap? No Dave, I think I'm pretty squared away on rap, at least for now. So uh, this has been a hell of a reminiscence so far, yeah. Seriously, though, I wasn't actually intending to fork this, like, instantaneously in the direction of some, like, legitimately sincere dialogue on fucking sexuality and romance. I didn't plan on this, dude. You gotta believe me. I believe you. It's It's been cool, though. Yeah, did we cover everything? Um, probably not. Oh, right. You did it, Jade, for a while, so there's that. Whoa, what? I mean, Dave Sprite did. Oh. And of course, I mean the one from my time. Obviously not the one from this time. Who died, I guess, before that happened? Right. Man, that still just seems so sad. I guess even when you fix things, not everything can be perfect. Yeah, so how'd that go? Me and Jade, or him and Jade. Okay, I guess. My sense was it was kind of a dramatic overall. I'm not sure it was the best relationship, probably because of Jay Sprite's, uh, unique issues. Hmm. But there were a lot of fun memories. I'll tell you about them sometime. Maybe when Jade is awake, because I'm sure she'd want to know, too. Yeah. Hey, um, the girl you came with, Rose's mom, Roxy? Yeah, what's she like? She's really nice. She's fun and easy to talk to. It almost feels like she's been one of our friends, you know? It almost feels like she's always been one of our friends, you know? Yeah, how, uh, how long have you and she actually been traveling together? Um, not too long. We only met, like, a day ago, I mean, from my perspective. Huh. She's been through some really difficult stuff recently. Well, we both have, actually. But I feel like it was all a bit more personal for her. Being on her adventure than suddenly losing all her friends and watching Rose die right there. While she'd been kind of viewing Rose as a version of her mom. I was just goofball, some goofball drifting randomly here and there between reality. So I was mostly just confused by everything. But for her, I could tell it was all really devastating. I'm so happy she gets to be with Rose again. Not to mention all her other friends. For some reason, I feel happier for her getting to reunite with people she lost, like, she lost than I do for myself. It sounds like you like her. I do! No, I mean, like, actually like her. Oh, uh, hmm. I don't know, maybe. Wow, dude, after one day, maybe you should slow your roll. I didn't say I did, though. I'm joking, it's fine, who cares? Oh, okay. She's my mom, isn't she? Man, I'm not sure if we should keep thinking about all our relations this way. Why? It's kind of weird. Is it? Do you feel weird about dating my mom? Is that it? I'm not dating her, though! But if you did, then you wouldn't want to think of her like that because, like, the familial weird times it invokes? Jeez, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm ready for every single deep conversation we can squeeze into this wacky rapid-fire session of fun pal talk. Okay, but I think I like thinking of her as my mom, even if it's a little weird. You do? Why? Not sure. I never even stopped and thought about it before. The idea of what it would be like to have a mom instead of a hyper-aggressive lunatic of an adult male guardian. I never let myself give it a second of consideration, but now... 
Seeing her actually here, even though she's just some teen girl I never met? I like the idea. It, it's nice. Okay, that's actually kind of cute. Yeah, yeah, I guess it kind of fucking is. Alright, well, no matter what happens, it's okay with me if you want to think of her that way. Sweet. Okay, so... I wasn't expecting that to take 25 minutes. But it took 25 minutes! So... I think these conversations are going to take multiple episodes. Huh. Um... Hmm. How should I handle this? I... Uh... I'll th hmm. Let's see. Women... Dudes and women. Women. Women and dude. Women and dude. Craziness. Dudes. I think maybe I should end this episode here. Uh, because it's 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 like 3 o'clock in the morning. So, I'm going to end this episode here. This has been episode 135 of Let's Read Homestuck. In the next episode, I definitely intend on doing more than just one of these. Because like I said, I was not expecting this just one right here to be as long as it was. So... This has been Anashi Sasuke. If you liked it, a like and a subscribe will be groovy. If you didn't, you would need to do either one of those things, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Later.